Okay, we in uh, Baruch, the fourth chapter in the Apocrypha, because the Most High said, He wanted us to put all the abominations out of his sight. He removed us from the land because we kept on dealing with B-A-A-L, which you look up that definition is L-O-R-D that's in this Bible that you keep calling on. And G-O-D is a European invention, which is dog spelled backwards. And David prophesied in Psalms 22 and 16, he says, for dogs have enclosed me. The assembly of the wicked have uh, they closed and kept me. See, they have they pierced my hands and my feet. You see, let me read it right. Psalms 22:16. King David prophesying concerning the Mashiach Yahushua. He said, "For dogs have compassed me; the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me." They pierced my hands and my feet. So I got a whole lesson on dogs in the Bible, you know, concerning how we call the Gentiles dogs because of profaneness and because of homosexuality. And that's what it says in the New Unger's Bible Dictionary. Look it up for yourself. So going to Baruch, the fourth chapter in the Apocrypha, verse 6, it says, Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved the most high to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies. For you provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils, like you're going to do tomorrow in dealing with, call yourself, honoring the most high of Mashiach Yavashai on Easter. When you say Mashiach Yavashai died on the sixth day, you can count, right? The seventh day, the first day, got the second day. But you honor him on two days after y'all say he died. I mean, come on, that don't make no sense. Which, which is dealing with the idol, Semiramis, or Istar. That's what Easter is named after. The idol Istar, that's Semiramis. Nimrod's mother slash wife, who had a son named Tammuz together. Listen, same traditions going on and on and on. When you gonna learn? You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved them outside to wrath. You were delivered unto the enemies, not to your friends, but unto your enemies. For you provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to the most high. See, that's why I go to uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 20 and 21. Oh, that's the Old Testament. Look at the New Testament. And look at now. Compared to now. Still doing the same thing. That's what y'all doing. Y'all go to church tomorrow. And celebrate Easter. Has nothing to do with a Mashiach Yavashai. First Corinthians 10 and 20. But I say. That the things with the Gentiles. Sacrifice or worship, they sacrifice to devils and not to the most high. Devil means deceitful, evil person. Devils is deceitful, evil people. And that's what you're dealing when you're dealing with this pagan celebration of the fertility god idol that's coming in tomorrow. They're talking about the equinox, the spring equinox, you got the winter solstice, all that's pagan. Has nothing to do with us. But I say, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice or worship, they sacrifice or worship to devils and not to the Most High. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. We all the way back in the time of Baruch and Ezra and all of them. And here we in the New Testament still get the same thing, man. And we can look at it right now. You still sacrifice your children to devils to this day. Send them into them churches. What religion is in the Bible? And not to the Most High. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils, he said. You cannot drink the cup of the Most High and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Most High's table and of the table of devils. You see that? So which one are you going to choose? We would always chose death. That's choosing the devil. Then they choose the devil. But then the devil say, hey, 
You will not surely die. To eat, eat of me, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna die. We always chose the devil instead of life. Living for we had a chance to live forever and ever and ever. We chose death. Most I say you're gonna die if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All you need is righteousness. Like what you think the kingdom gonna be? Ain't gonna be no wickedness. It's gonna be all righteous. He said all the people gonna be righteous. And all you that don't want to be righteous, he's going to put you to death. And we're going to see the carcasses of those that transgress the most High's laws that you say you ain't under whenever we have our great uh, new moons. Most High will it from there and you there. Most, we're going to have the new moons and the Sabbaths and the, the holy days having a great time. And there ain't going to be no, nothing but merry and sad. I mean, uh, excuse me, joy. No more sadness. But we're going to see these. Last thing you told us, last thing... Uh, uh, Isaiah told us that we're going to see these dead carcasses, dead bodies where the worms never die and the fires never quit. That's how you're going home. But you ain't going to be crying. You ain't going to be sad. Ain't gonna be, I mean, women ain't going to have no compassion like they have now. Ain't going to be on no crying. He said, going to take away, wipe away all tears. He said, look. It said, Baruch 4 and 7, for you provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to the most high. For ye, for, ye, for ye have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up. And ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. But when she saw the wrath of the Most High coming upon you, she said, Hearken. Even the land said, Hearken. O ye that dwell about Zion, the Most High have brought upon me great mourning. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them because we didn't follow his laws as a commandment. It's the same thing that these preachers are saying that you're not under. Just why we were in the captivity to our enemies as it is written. With joy did I nourish them. The land said with joy it loved us nourishing us but sent them away with weeping and mourning. See? Let no man rejoice over me. A widow. The land. And forsaken of many, who for the sins of my children am left desolate. Now, if the true children of Israel was in that land over there in Israel, that land would be desolate. That land is desolate. Beautiful land. Ain't nothing growing there. He said, who for the sins of my children are left desolate. For sins of what we did against the Most High, the land is desolate. This is what the Most High said. It's right here. Because they departed from the law of the Most High. The land is desolate because ain't nobody there. The land is crying out. Because we departed from the law of the Most High. The same laws that the Most High is bringing us back to now. And you preachers still saying that we ain't under the law. That's why he said, woe to you pastors that, just, that scatter his sheep. How they mind scatter brain. Don't know if they coming or going. Show them the Bible. Or hand them the Bible. They can't talk to you at all. Because they departed from the law of the Most High. Isn't that what you what you teach him? That you're not under the law? This is why we went into captivity, slavery, and bondage to our enemies. Because we departed from the law of the Most High. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. See, let them that dwell about Zion come, and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters which the everlasting has brought upon them. For he hath brought a nation upon them from far. A shameless nation. Look how he's, look at them. Our captors, our oppressors. He said, a shameless nation. And of a strange language. We didn't understand it. Like we spoke Hebrew. Who neither reverence old man. They don't reverence the old man. Nor pity the child or the child. 
these have carried away the dear beloved, children of the widow. And we know the beloved, we read the beloved in, up in uh, Baruch 3 and 36. He have found out all the way of knowledge and have given it unto Jacob, his servant, and to Israel, his beloved. So you can't get around it thinking it's talking about anybody else. It's talking about the Israelites that are the beloved of the Most High. Going back to verse 15. For he have brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation, and of a strange language, who ne neither reverence old man nor pity child. These have carried away the dear beloved who are the twelve tribes of Israel, children of the widow, and left her that was alone, desolate without daughters. Man. But what can I help you? Say, how can I help you? How can we be helped to come out of our captivity like the Most High brought us out of Egypt like we're right now dealing with this 15th day when we came out of Egypt? The same day, same time. For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. See that? The Most High going to deliver us from the hands of our enemies. Say, go your way, oh my children. Go your way. For I am left desolate. It's a land talking to us. I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. So the time the most I have pity on us. That's why the land said what? Verse 17, but what can I help you? How can I help you? This is what it says. Verse 20, I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Most High, and he shall deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. The land telling us, as I've, I've told you, you read Judges 10 to 10 down, you know, Exodus the third time, most I heard our cry, they had pity on us and delivered us this day on the 15th of the first month. He said, be of good cheer. Oh, my children, cry unto the most high and he shall deliver you from the power of and hand of the enemies. For my hope is in the everlasting. My hope is in the most high. That he will save you. And joy has come upon me from the Holy One. Because of the Mary, the mercy, excuse me, the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. The mercy that's coming to the Israelites from the most high. Our Savior, for I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but the Most High will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. There can be no more tears, like he said. Like as now, the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, all these other nations seen us go into captivity. So shall they see shortly your salvation from our power which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. See, my children, suffer patiently like we are in Jacob's trouble. The wrath that has come upon you from the Most High, but not an enemy have persecuted thee. But shortly, the land said to us, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. My delicate ones have gone through rough ways. And were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Say, be of good comfort, O my children. And cry unto the Most High again. The solution. In humility. 
for he shall be re for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it were your mind to go astray for, from the Most High, so being returned, seek him ten times more. That's all of us. Who out there can say they don't need to seek the Most High ten times more? We went astray from the Most High. Two thirds of our people always been astray from the Most High. That's why he's telling us that's a one third to seek him ten times more. All of us. I don't know coming up there was like, you know, telling brothers that leave up out or leave, you know, come back, gotta seek him ten times more. No. All of us need to seek him ten times more. We can't seek him enough. We can't seek him enough. Put it like that. He said, because we all them fell astray. You weren't born in this and live righteously all your life. That's why he said, for as it were your mind to go astray from the Most High, so being returned, that's all you that going astray from him. He said, seek him ten times more. We all can seek him ten times more. We ain't sought him enough. That's why I say you got to learn to praise the Most High. People talking about all oh, praises. Don't you want to praise the Most High? Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Let me read it again. Why is it where your mind to go astray from the Most High? So being returned, seek him ten times more. But he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy again with your salvation. Take a good heart. Take a good mind, O Jerusalem, O Israelites. For he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Misery, miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoice at thy fall. This is what he's telling us. The land telling us. Miserable are those that afflicted us. And rejoice at our fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad at thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. When the most I destroy them. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude. And her pride shall be turned in the morning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting. How are you going to stop this fire from the everlasting? Long to endure. And she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. O Jerusalem, look about the, toward the east. And behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the most high. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sendest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of the most high. Mm -hmm. I love that. I, that's why I went over there. Y'all have to bear with me. I, I love that because it's letting us know, man. It's letting us know that we got a power and we did wrong, so therefore the Most High put us in captivity, slavery, and bondage under our enemies, but he's going to bring us back to the land that's desolate, and we're going to inhabit it. It's going to be better than it was in the Garden of Eden, he said. Better. And that time going to be, he's going to say, he's going to have mercy. And when he have mercy, go to Isaiah 14 and 1. This one going to have mercy. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Most High will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. You're going to choose the Israelites, 12 tribes of Israel, and set them in their own land. This is what Most High is going to do. Set them in their own land. And the strangers, the other nations, shall be joined with them, the Gentile nations outside of the 12 tribes of Israel, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. They're going to be cleaving to us. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. We're going to take the people. These other nations and bring them to their place because they're going to be a remnant of all nations that's going to be fulfilling this prophecy. 
And the people shall take them, the Israelites shall take them, these other nations, and bring them to their place, the place they're going to be living. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Most High for service and handmaids, for slave men and slave women. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Most High thy power shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. You see, that's what the land was saying. He will give us mercy when we come back to the land. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How has the oppressor ceased? The golden city, see how America ceased. The golden city ceased. That's why he said he's going to bring that fire on them. We just got to get ourselves ready because we're doing too many things that's that's off still. But it, I don't know, it could be the two-thirds. could be just the two-thirds that's, you know, part of, you know, made in vain. But some of you are going to hear this message and hopefully you're going to change. If not, then you're going to continue to remain the same. Let's go to Jeremiah 18 and 11. We went to the kingdom, but we got to make it to the kingdom. Let's look at what we're doing and what we've done. Let's say, Jeremiah 18 11, say, Now therefore go to, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus said the Most High, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way from following Easter. The idol Estar, Semiramis, and make your ways and your doings good. How do you make your ways and your doings good? What's good? Romans 7 and 12. See, some of these scriptures y'all should be remembering. Romans 7 and 12. Wherefore the law is holy, it's the law of the Most High. He wrote with his own finger. The work of the Most High. Wherefore the law is holy. And the commandment holy and just and good. So you see good, that's talking about the laws of the Most High, keeping the laws of the Most High. So it's going back to Jeremiah 18 11. Now therefore go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus said the Most High, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way. And make your ways and your doings good. Because look, this is this the most I said. This is this a commandment he gave us. This cancels out all religions. Are your religions doing this? Psalm 78 and 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob. And appointed a law in Israel. Which he commanded our fathers. That they should make them known to their children. Make these laws, the moral laws, civil laws, dietary laws, ceremonial laws, and sacrificial laws known to the children. We know the sacrificial law was done away when the Master of Shai is the ultimate lamb of the Most High that we just went over, Passover, and Feast of Eleven Bread, died for the sins of the 12 tribes of Israel. We're supposed to teach our children the laws of the Most High. That the generation to come might know them, might know the laws of the Most High. Even the children which should be born, which should arise and declare them to their children. You teach their children so they can teach their children. That they might set their hope or their faith in the Most High. And not forget the works of the Most High. But keep His commandments. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. My Shai told us that in St. John 14, 15. It might not be as their fathers. How was our forefathers? A stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation that set not their heart or their mind aright. And whose spirit was not steadfast with the Most High. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 10, they kept not my the covenant of the Most High and refused to walk in his law. Don't that sound familiar? All you that's out there in them religions, what religion is, I'm going to ask again. Because I know some of y'all probably look at one, whatever number it is of this lesson, don't go no further. So what religion is teaching their people the moral laws, the civil laws, the dietary laws, the ceremonial laws? And reviewing the sacrificial laws. If thou might say. Besides the Hebrew Israelites. What religion? Is the Baptists doing it? Catholics doing it? 
Jehovah Witness doing? So y'all are not celebrating Easter, but y'all celebrating the Passover. Y'all celebrating the Feast of the Eleven Bread. Y'all celebrating the last day of the Feast of the Eleven Bread, the 21st. Hmm? Which one? Speak up, speak up. Okay. This is what we're supposed to be doing, though. But you hear what he said? Verse 10, and they kept not my, the covenant, the, 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 the contract, the agreement of the Most High and refused to walk in his law and forgot his works and his wonders that he had showed them. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand as in heap. Water on this side and water on that side. In the daytime, also, he led them with a cloud, the works of the Most High. In all the night, with a light of fire. That's a Mashiach that was shot. As an angel of the Most High, the Spirit of the Most High, in the cloud, which is a chariot of the Most High, when you read Psalms 104 and 3. What they call flying saucers, UFOs, we call them IFOs, identified flying objects. They're not un unidentified. We know what they are. They're the chariots of the Most High. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand as in heat. That's what we just went through, going through, coming out of Egypt. On the 15th day of the first month, not the 14th day of the Passover, but the 15th day of the first month. Just all this start to happen. In the daytime also he led them with a cloud in the wilderness. And all the night with a light of fire. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of the great depths. And he told Moses to speak to the rock. First he told him one time to hit, hit the rock. Then the next time he said, that's why listeners are, listen to our responsibility. Next time he told him to speak to the rock. That's why you got to listen. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted the Most High while Mashiach was shy because he was the angel of the Most High in their heart, in their mind by asking me for their lust. Yeah, they spake against the Most High. They said, we the Israelites, can the Most High furnish a table in the wilderness? Can he feed us in the wilderness? Behold, he smoked the rock. That the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? That ain't enough. We thirsty, we thirsty. So he gave us water. Can he can he can he bring can he bring bread also? Can he provide flesh for this for his people? Can he give us some bread and some meat? He got the water. All we thirsty. Oh, complaining, 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 murmuring, murmuring, murmuring. Therefore the most I heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, against us, and, and anger also came up against Israel because they re believed not in the Most High and trusted not in his salvation. Him getting us out of captivity, slavery, and bondage, bringing salvation, power, and authority to us, going into the wilderness, getting us prepared for our means to be able to serve him. And look how we acted. No other nation can say they have the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to this day. And look how we acted. Because they believed not, verse 22, in the Most High and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels food. Wow. He sent them meat to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven. And by his power he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust. And feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea. Man. He sent us quails man. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp round about their habitation so did they eat and were well filled for he gave them their own desire whatever you desired it to taste like it tastes like 
man. They were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of the Most High came upon them and slew the fattest of them. I'm hungry, I'm hungry. The fattest of them want, got a lot, want a lot to eat. He slew the fattest of them. That's why y'all better learn not to eat so much and smoke down the chosen men of Israel. Killed them. But all this, they sin still. Seeing all this happen, the seeing all the things that happened in Egypt, them ten plagues he put upon the Egyptians and didn't touch us. We've seen all this. We've seen him open up the Red Sea. Pharaoh chasing us, scared to death, crying to the Most High at the edge of the sea. And he opened up the sea. And we go across the Red Sea on dry ground. Dry ground. And we've seen him close the, the, the Red Sea on Pharaoh and his chariots. And they end up dead on the shore. We've seen on all this. Seen all this. All these things he done for us. We murmuring, complaining and complaining. He did all these things for us. Verse 32. For all this they sin still. And believe not for his wondrous works. Therefore their days did he consume in vanity. And their years in trouble. When he slew them. Then they saw them. Start seeing death. Then we wake up and start seeing them, seeking them. And they returned and inquired early after the Most High. And they remembered that the Most High was their rock and the high power, their redeemer. With a rock, the, 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 the first power is Mashiach Yahweh And the high power is the Most High, our redeemer. Therefore, nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. Oh, I love you, Most High. Praise the Most High. Praise the Most High. And they lied unto him with their tongues. We're going to do what's right. We're going to do what's right. We done read it. We didn't hearken to the voice of the Most High. But their heart, their mind was not right with him. Neither were they just steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yeah, many a time... Turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they had they were but flesh, a wind that passes away and cometh not again. You know? Say our flesh, we know but flesh, he said, a wind that passes away and don't come again. How often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yeah, they turned back and tempted the most high and limited the holy one of Israel. The limitations on him. They remember not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Here we are in this day still, the 15th of the first month, that the Most High say we're supposed to remember, a memorial to remember. How he had wrought his sins, his scripture, his signs in Egypt, and his wonders in the field of Zohan. And I'm reading about it because it's about the Most High. And had turned their rivers into blood. And their floods that they could not drink on the Passover. While we in the house. With blood around our doorposts. When the Mashiach Shai went through as the death angel. And killed the firstborn of the Egyptians. And had turned their rivers into blood and their floods. That they could not drink. The Egyptians, not us. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs, which destroyed them. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar, and their labor unto the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hell, and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to the hell, and their flocks to hot thunderbolts, lightning coming down. Killing them. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Because they deal with idolatry. They deal with evil. So the most I sent evil angels among them, these Egyptians, the Hamites, so called Africans, the Hatters in captivity. He made a way to his anger. He spared not his, their soul from death but gave their life over to the pestilence and smote all the firstborn in Egypt. It's when the Most High had Pharaoh let us go. 
He smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the chief of their strength, in the tabernacles of Ham. See, let you know, Egyptians are of the seed of Ham. We look up Ham in the Zion of Aaron Compact, Compact Bible Dictionary. It says Ham. Some of you might not know. Let me read that to you. It's the Zion of Aaron Compact Bible Dictionary. Ham. Because a lot of y'all think that your, your post shop preacher preaching and told us we come from Ham. We come from Shem. You know, lie to you. It says Ham. The youngest son of Noah, born probably around about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood, he became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. Not the Negroes. Not the Negroes. But the Egyptians are not the Negroes. Ethiopians are not the Negroes. Libyans, North Africans, are not the Negroes. And Canaanites are not the Negroes. See, we're not the Negroes. We come from Shem. They know this. That's why you want to keep stuff from us, you put it in the book. So now here we are, looking at books and finding out we've been lied to. Uh, going back to Psalm 78:51. And smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the chief of their strength in the tabernacles of Ham. They know Ham. We just read about Ham. Not the Negroes. We not we not all Africans, or so-called Africans. We're from Shem, not Ham. You know, everybody came from Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, or Japheth, but made his own people to go forth like sheep, and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. And he led them on safety so that they feared not. But the sea overwhelmed their enemies. And he brought them to the border of his sanctuary. Even his this mountain which his right hand had purchased. Which is Mashiach Yavashiah, the right hand. As the angel of the Mosiah, he cast out the heathen also before them. And divided them an inheritance by lying. And made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. We dwell in tents. Yet they tempted and provoked the most high power and kept not his testimonies and keep his laws, such commandments, but turned back and dealt unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow, for they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. When the most high heard this, he was wroth and greatly abhorred Israel, greatly hated us. He said, all you need is me from the beginning. So that he forsook the tabernacle of Shalom, the tent which he placed among men and delivered his strength into captivity. We are strength of 12 tribes of Israel into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. He gave his people all over also unto the sword and was wroth with his inheritance. That's why the land is telling us how to get back there, crying to the Most High keep his commandments, keep his laws. The fire consumed their young men and their maidens were not given to marriage. They were taken into captivity. Another man, another nation had them. Their priests fell by the sword and their widows made no lamentation, couldn't even cry. Then the Most High wait as one out of sleep and like a mighty man that shouted by reason of wine, and he smote his enemies in the hinder parts. He put them to a perpetual reproach, disgraced them. Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah as the head tribe. Tribe of Judah, so-called Negroes. And we all come from the waters of Judah, all 12 tribes. The Mount Zion, which he loved. So he chose the tribe, Jacob's fourth-born son, Judah, which would be the so-called Negroes today, to be the head tribe. That's why Mashiach Shai came out of the tribe of Judah. We read Hebrews 7 and 14. But it's evident, the fact, that our power, Mashiach Shai, sprang out of Judah. Well, all the tribes are important, but it's, we have the head tribe, which is Judah. And he built a sanctuary like high places, like the earth, 
which he hath established forever. He chose David also his servant and took him from the sheepfolds. David was of the tribe of Judah. From following the ewes, great with young, he brought him to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. All praise to the Most High. So, going back to uh, verse Jeremiah 18 and 11. It says, now therefore go to, go to, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, thus say the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob be the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. We know the good is keeping of the laws of the most high. And they said, there is no hope. There is no hope. But we will walk after our own devices. And we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. We're going to follow whatever we want to follow. That's why the Most High told us. Go to Proverbs 3 and 1. See. We're going to follow whatever our heart. Our mind. The heart is the mind. Whatever, the way we feel. We're going to do whatever we want to do. Let's look at Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, Trust in the Most High with all your thine heart, all your mind, and lean not unto thine own understanding. But that's what we say we're going to do. We're going to follow our own evil mind the way we think. Just like it is today. A lot of people, they don't have no time for the Most High. They don't have no, enough time for the Most High. This is His Sabbath day. And every day, we're supposed to be honoring Him, giving Him glory. His name is Jealous. You heard it. That's why he said, Jeremiah 12, excuse me, 18 and 12. And they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices, follow our own ways. And we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart, evil mind. Therefore, thus said, since you want to do that, thus said the Most High. Actually, now among the heathen who have heard such things. The virgin of Israel have done a very horrible thing in doing and saying the things that we sin. Sad. Genesis 26 and 11. Genesis 26 and 11. Not Genesis, but Jeremiah 26 and 11. Then spake the priests and the prophets unto the princes and to all the people saying this man is worthy to die for he hath prophesied against this city and as ye have heard with your ears talking about Jeremiah then spake Jeremiah unto all the princes and to all the people saying the most I sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city all the words that ye have heard therefore now amend your ways See, that's what we got to do. Amend your ways. Change your ways. In your doings. And obey the voice of the Most High, your power. And the Most High will repent him of the evil that he had pronounced against you. You better hear what he's saying. Because the Most High pronounced evil against you. When you do wrong, when you do the wrong thing, he pronounced evil against us. That's why we got to understand and understand. As for me, <coughs> as for me, behold, I am, Jeremiah said, I am in your hand. Do with me as seem as good and me, which means right unto you. He said, but know ye, he said, know this, he said, know ye for certain that if ye put me to death, you shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city. And upon the inhabitants thereof. For of a truth, the Most High have sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ears. And some started to believe him. But we got these preachers, man. They they not gonna they not gonna follow right. They're not gonna do right. Go to Micah 311. That's how they go.
Micah 3 and 11. Micah 3 and 11. This is how they roll. <clears throat> the heads thereof judge for reward. They judge for they judge for money. Pass the plate. The heads thereof judge for reward. And the priests thereof teach for hire. And the prophets thereof divine for money. You know. Like whatever they doing, they they got the cash app, they got the PayPal, they got all this going on. Pay me, pay me, pay me, pay me, pay me, pay me. It'd be like the, like, like the slot machine. Choo, choo, choo. Money over here, money over there, money over there. I mean, in some churches, they even have uh, ATM machines in them. You know, I remember being in the church a long, long time ago. And the preacher got up and said, Everybody get up and give me $100. Line up and give me $100. And they lined up and gave me $100. Just like he said. Bunch of robots and robotees, man. Spiritual puppets. You know. Brain polluted. And then they didn't have no money for their babies. The heads thereof judge for reward. And the priests thereof teach for hire. And the prophets thereof divine for money. I remember that was in, uh, we used to have a, um, a donut shop that was next door and a lot of the elder men would, would meet over there and they were sitting there talking and sometimes I would go over there so I'd be friending them and I'd be listening to their conversation I just want to hear what they you know be saying to be able to you know have something to be able to bring to the truth and um, I remember one guy one brother said yeah he gave his daughter some money to get the baby pampers and milk and all of that and she gave it to the preacher. She gave it to the church. And he was saying, I ain't never given her nothing. She get nothing up for me. No more. She gave all that money to the church. The babies ain't got no milk and pampers. He was just he was mad about it. But that's how people are, man. You see what it says? The heads thereof judge for reward and the priests thereof teach for hire and the prophets thereof divine for money. And they make them feel bad if they don't give money. And I remember before I got in the truth, I was just I was at this one church, which probably was the only one I ever really was in like that like that, um, to that capacity of being somebody in the church, representing somebody in the church. And the dude said, the preacher, he just he just became the preacher, and he said, yeah. He said, whenever we pass the plate. We're going to get the envelopes and we want you to act like, even if you're having just act like you put some money in there and put it in the plate. Because niggas, whenever they see other niggas put, put, spending money, they're going to get their money. That's how we going to get them. Man, that hit me the wrong way. What will happen after that, I don't even talk about, but trust me. I wanted the truth, so whatever went down, went down. But I tell you, I didn't like that, point blank. And then like this they end up putting me out but um like it says the heads thereof judge for reward and the priests thereof teach for hire and the prophets thereof divine for money money that's a true story i mean that really happened in my life divine for money yet will they lean upon the most high and say it's not the most high among us None evil shall come upon us, right? They gonna say they talk about they, they telling people they ain't under the law. They gonna say, hey, the Lord is a must. The, the, well, they gonna say probably, look, that is Baal, Baal. Excuse me. Now, I showed you the definition of Baal. Let me show it. Cause some of y'all probably never gonna look at the other videos. So let me show it to you in this video, whatever part this is, so you can see it. This is from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, something that we probably wasn't supposed to get our hands on, but we got it. And look what it says for Baal. Baal, the, the, the meaning of Baal next to it is say L-O-R-D. So you can see it for yourself. See? See that? Baal. That's what we did. That idol worship. That made the Most High angry and jealous. 
It say L O R D. So, so they put that in there. Y'all steady calling on what by all means, Lord. They put it in here. So like you both sorry about so much I can't sorry about because we supposed to be calling on these 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 names and these problems. I'm, and I'm trying to change, you know. And here it is. Everywhere you see, you see their inventions. And what we did that was wrong, that made the Most High upset. He said we made him cry two times. But anyway, as you see here in Micah 3.11, it said the heads thereof judge for reward. And the priests thereof teach for hire. And the prophets thereof divine for money. You know, they got a certain salary that they get. It's almost like a, it's a business. They ain't dealing with this truth. And the prophets thereof divine for money. Say divine for money. Yet will, I, will they lean upon the most high and say, It's not the most high. It's not the most high among us. None evil shall come upon us, right? But look, they tell you not under the law, right? But you're under mercy and grace. But look what the most high say to you. Go to Amos 9 and 10. They got you all twisted. It says all the sinners, those that transgress the most high's laws, because what's sin? 1 John 3, in the New Testament that y'all believe in them churches, them leaders, y'all believe in the New Testament. That's all y'all know, really. Except for what y'all know. Y'all know about what tithing is at in the Old Testament, right? Well, a man robbed God. You know what that scripture at, right? <laughs> Look what it says. 1 John 3 and 4. This is the definition of sin. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So now, if you transgress the law, you're a sinner, right? So it says... In Amos 9 and 10, all the sinners, all those that transgress the Mosai's laws, break the Mosai's laws. He gave us 613 laws. You know, moral laws, civil laws, dietary laws, sacrificial, um, excuse me, ceremonial laws. He said, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. Listen, which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Isn't the same thing that they were saying in Micah 311? The evil shall not prevent or overtake us. This is what they were saying. Boy, you got a price to pay. I know that. I sure would want to be in your 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 shoes here this time. This is what they say. In Micah 311, they said, Is not the most high among us? None evil shall come upon us. 